Here come the part two of Q&A session to celebrate my new book around Java persistence. So, based on your comments, thoughts, comments here on YouTube, I created the second part. So, join us and know the answer. Hello you, my name is Otavio Santana and welcome to my YouTube channel, the channel for who wants to become a better software engineer and software architect. So if you want to learn more around software architecture, software design, Java, persistence layer, NoSQL database, subscribe in my channel and participate to become an ultimate software engineer. Okay, let's celebrate this new book with the second part of the QA session. How do you balance the need of optimal performance with data security in Java persistence layer, especially in complex enterprise architecture? Of course, that is not a simple answer here. In our book, we cover a little bit about security transactions and migrations in the chapter number 10, where you cover, but briefly check the encapsulation in your code design Make sure that your, your architecture design is following the principle, the rules. Avoid any kind of mis uh, encapsulation. For example, explore layers with cautions. Of course, you can explore DTO to avoid any kind of missing encapsulation, explore some critical information outside. In the cloud perspectives, use and explore the 12 factor application, especially the the third one, the configurations where nobody on development should know about user and passwords of the database on production. And of course, check and run, for example, assess to analytic your code to avoid any kind of code vulnerability in the static code, for example, SQL injection and so on. And believe if you avoid any kind of code vulnerability, you'll be the exception because three out of four application has any kind of code vulnerability. And again, check the chapter number 10. Provide any best advice practice with relational database on reactive application. Uh, use the R2DBC, so it's a uh, a relational database driver with support with reactive. Make sure your database connection pooling model is also another thing important. Make sure that you are gonna use no blocking libraries the whole time. So go with Webflux until your driver, for example. Uh, reactive handle ha error handling. Make sure that you are using that properly, especially because it's harder to find bugs with Reactive API. So pay attention on on return resume, on return error, or retry, or something, something like that. Cachings and optimized queries. The third and last question for today is around a high performance systems that need speed database response. How do you optimize queries? Uh, the, first, the first step is to understand the context. I mean, each database I'm using, because each database has different style of modeling. For example, for this database, you might know normalization. NoSQL, we usually check the query, uh, the view perspective, so it's more query-driven design. For example, if I do a query, I can Optimize return everything that I need to on that scenario. I can do the common query response design as well. So usually with NoSQL database, it's more cheaper write and read. So I can do the the query driven design to modeling my document column family application to be ready. And once the application needs the request, the request is ready by the ID. Another point, check the partitioning of the database, especially when you handle with high and a huge volume of data. And of course, explore no single database types. So 
there is NoSQL, there is NewSQL, there is Relation Database. Those are super important and valid. As I said, I use several times. Everything has a trade-off. Please check. Make, check if it makes sense to use key value, for example, in that scenario, or document, or white column, or graph, or new SQL, and so on. So, first step, understand your context, uh, the query, the why you use the, the, the database, take the best advantage of it. For example, check the SQL explain. If you are using relational database, check the normalization process, and so on. So that is the all questions for today. Please let me know your thoughts. And of course, if you do have questions, I have a huge pleasure to answer each one of your questions. And lastly, if you want to keep learning around software architecture and become a huge base software engineer to get a better and become a better engineer, subscribe in my channel. That's all for today. Bye.